Celeste is a game which has a pretty big modding scene. Within all of the mods and levels made by the community, there is one mod that sticks out, the Strawberry Jam Collab, which is the biggest mod ever made. It contains 111 different levels, but one really caught my eye, Clockwork by Fonda1515. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the level Clockwork from the Strawberry Jam Collab. I'm going to be going into the level itself, its mechanics, the music, the decoration, and the strawberry rooms. Um, so let's get right into it. This map immediately starts off harder than anything in the main game by doing an ultra, which isn't even taught in the main game, and then doing spring cancels, which are also aren't to use in the main game, dropping down to do a wall bounce where you dash up, jump off the wall, giving you a fling boost up, then you do it again, fall down past the moving spikes, do a wave dash, and then some more spring cancels, and then finally you can get past the room with a final wall bounce. This second room isn't much easier than the first. You start with a wall bounce, then a wave dash, and then we're introduced to something new. This is a hyper body hop where we do a wave dash, a small jump, and then jump again. Then we get to do more spring cancels, but instead of using a spring, we use a bird. And then we get to do one of my favourite pieces of tech, known as a ground ultra, or the Celeste community is named a Gultra, where you do an ultra against the ground and spam the jump button. Moving on to the third room. The third room is pretty similar to the last few. We do some more spring cancels, some wave dashes, but then we're taught a thing known as a neutral wall jump. Where we wall jump without holding any direction, to jump and not go that far away from the wall, we repeat these to go and do a wave dash, a, an ultra off the bird, and then we go down to the section where everything lines up perfectly, we do two wall bounces, and then head off a couple of springs, and then the final spring to get into the next room. The fourth room is a really interesting room. We start off similar, but then we are chased by a moving block that we have to activate to get through. We do our spring cancels, and then we're introduced to another new mechanic, known as the battling orb, which launches us up, and then we have to do a wave dash, and stay above the block, to drop down, do another wave dash, jump off these blocks just in time to wall bounce off the block and go up, collect some more tokens and get battling to launch us up into the next room. This room we have a choice of going left to go get a strawberry or right to continue. After going right, we continue with our normal stuff, some ultras, and then we have to revert back using a wall bounce and then go forward. We head up, do some more spring cancels, we race this block to collect these tokens and then we drop down. This bit here seems quite easy, but because of the spikes above, whenever we hit the spring, we have to dash to the left, and then dash again, do an ultra, catch up to the block just in time, twice, and then use battling to get us into the next room. This next room starts with something new. This is a fish super, where we do a super off the top of the fish, and then we do a wall bounce, have to keep our dashes using the springs, do a spring cancel on the fish, a reverse wave dash to drop down, and with another fish super, we go back, catch this fish, catch up to this fish, hit all these fish down using fish supers to be caught by the moving block, and then we get to use them to collect the tokens and then race up the battle room just in time to get into the next room. This next room starts off with a reverse super, another hyper bunny hop, and then we have to use the fish to conserve our dashes. We go back to a reverse wave dash, a fish ultra, jump on top of this fish, bounce off, do the same over here, dash back to hit this fish to be boosted over, we get to keep our dashes, then we use a fish that explodes to send us over here, we do a wave dash, dash up, and get moved side to side by these moving blocks to make it into the next room. In this room, we start by going up, dashing side to side to get the keys, and then we do a couple of neutrals off these walls here. We go up, do a, a bird ultra bunny hop, which is like a hyper bunny hop, but with an ultra. Then we go down here, wall bounce up, do some spring, spring cancels with the battle and orb, do a wave dash to catch up to these springs, go up, catch up to the next block to be cancelled for the battle and orb, and we head up into the final room. We start the last room with a spring cancel using the bird, drop down back to catch the spring, again catch the spring, wave dash to do some wall bounces and climb up using spring cancels, reverse super and use these fish to boost off, fish super again, race down past this block using the fish and then we have to catch up to all these fish, do three fish boosts back to back and then we gotta do a ultra bunny hops three times and eventually catch down here 
where we gotta do an upright diagonal dash to catch the final elevator, which will get us right to the end of the level where we'll see the crystal heart. Now that we've finished talking about the level itself, I'd like to talk about all of the strawberry rooms. We're going to be going through them in chronological order, and I'm going to be breaking them down the same way I did with the main level itself. The first berry room starts with a hyper into a jellyfish, which we use to jump up using these blocks to bounce off. Then we do a reverse wave dash to get to a hyper bunny hop, go up, use battle and some spring cancels using battle We go down this little dropper type area, where we drop down and then we get the strawberry. The second strawberry room starts with us doing reverse supers, then we use the battle and orb, reverse wave dash, then we do short jumps to get over to the battle and orb again, go up, race past that block before it crushes us, race up, do another wall bounce, wall bounce again, and then do hops up this wall to get the strawberry. The final strawberry room starts the three hyper bunny hops back to back, then we have to race away from these exploding fish, which then send us up to here, where we have to be in time with the walls, doing wave dashes over the walls, then we drop down, catch a wall, do an ultra, wall bounce, then we do a bird ultra, then we jump off and we're told GG, and we get the final strawberry, and that's the end of the level. In Clockwork, there is a secret room in which the bird tells you to go to the left to go see some commendable scenery. To get there, you have to do a hyper, a corner boost, an ultra, and then do a diagonal up left dash to get to the platform, in which text pops up on your screen saying OMG, and you can dash up into the orb above you to teleport back to the start. Now that I've finished talking about the level itself, I'd like to slow down and go more into the themes and the intricate details about the level itself. We can see from the starting area before we even load in everything we need to see and know about the level decoration wise. You can see the themes of the level through the gears and the clock in the background. We are shown immediately that it's in an old ruined clock tire seen by the cracks on the ground and on the ruined cobblestone. The gears are rusty, some silver, some gold but some bronze and rusted. We can also tell this is based on a clock tower by the ending room, which is set where the clock is. This final room also shows us more about the ruined clock tower. We see the ruined cobblestone all around still, and we still see rusted cogs. In the middle, we see stained glass in front of the heart. However, it is not looking out onto anything, and it is just glass by itself facing a wall. I believe the theming of this level is represented by its gimmick of the moving blocks that are different depending on the colour and it moves in time like a clock would do and everything in the level runs smoothly like clockwork hence the name of the level clockwork but the clock is ruined and it's damaged and there's rusty cogs meaning the sections where everything doesn't run as smoothly and you have to do some shenanigans with birds and move the things back into place where they're supposed to be by grabbing the tokens and using battle in to get up to sections where you couldn't usually get to. This is a very well represented mechanic in the level itself and it makes it very fun and smooth to play. This ruined clock is represented very well just like in the actual Celeste main game of the difficulty being a main aspect of the level. If this level wasn't an expert level, it wouldn't feel the same. It is, it's challenging and it's rewarding whenever you beat it, but it makes sense. The clock tower is ruined and you're trying to get through it. And just like the main game, you're struggling. Just like Celeste, you're climbing up the mountain, you're struggling, you're getting through a dangerous area. Just like clockwork, where well, you have to go through the ruined clock tower. You gotta move stuff back into place, you gotta move stuff around. And it makes the level have character. It feels multi layered. There's more to it than just the decoration and the music. There's a bunch of other stuff underneath the ground, there's difficulty that comes in a lot, and it makes the level feel personal to you, seeing as it takes so long to beat and struggle through.
Before we start the segment of the video, I would like to say I am not at all a music analyst, and I do not analyse music at all. There are some songs that I will go into depths and the lyrics and the music behind it, but instruments are a lot harder to talk about. But I still believe that this is a very important part of the level itself, and the music represents a lot of the themes in the level, and I'm going to talk about it anyway, but please take what I say with a grain of salt. This level has a lot of ticking patterns in the song, and you can tell that it's like a clock in the background, like a clock ticking, and you can hear it in sections like this. Also throughout the entire song, there's a use of chimes. You can hear it back there, and you can also hear it in any section that I will play, including this one here. These chimes remind us of older clocks, as, as in grandfather clocks, and help us visualise that this clock is still ruined and damaged, as if it was an older clock. The song also starts to speed up, and we can tell that we're being shown the passage of time, which then connotes a clock, or this old clock tower that's been ruined and destroyed, and it speeds up, and it kind of judders a little bit with the beat, the percussion makes it judder, like the clock isn't working very well. We can hear this beat in sections like this. From that section we are then again reminded of the ticking sound that started at the start because every single beat plays in twos and we hear one, two, one, two instead of just single beats going one, two, one, two, we hear one, two, one, two and it reminds us of a ticking clock and we hear the rhythmic and the very stable pattern of a clock ticking in the background throughout the entire song. A little further into the song, at around the 50 second mark, we start to hear gear-like sounds and more percussion. Different instruments of percussion and also a beat in the background starts to form, which starts slightly earlier, but it is still prevalent in the main segment of the song. This song is absolutely filled with connotations of clocks, such as grandfather clocks and even alarm clocks with high pitched sounds, and also chimes, and we hear beats repeated twice for the ticks, and it's all very rhythmic, and you can tell when each beat is happening, and it's a lot easier to follow than everything was all over the place. Even though the clock is slightly ruined, we can still tell by the beats juddering a little bit. After this section, we can hear the chimes start to become a bit more prevalent for the main in a segment of this song. We also continue to hear the beats in the background still stuttering and juddering a bit behind, and the song continues to speed up. And just before it finally reaches its peak, the tension is at a high point, and we want to know what happens next, what's coming after the speed. Is it going to slow down? Is it going to continue? When is it going to stop? This is heard in this section of the song here. At this climax of the song, we start to hear it continue to speed up and speed up until eventually it peaks and it finishes and it slowly muffles out and slows down, which can be heard in this segment here. The song continues to stay calm and we hear some new instruments introduced even though, as we'd assume, the songs would end, it's muffled out, but why are there more instruments? These instruments can be heard in this section here.
the reason that there's more instruments added and it starts to remind us of what it used to sound like at the start is the beat is circular it is reminding us of the start and it's a cyclical structure this is reminiscent of the fact that a clock is a circle and it's trying to show us that once the clock finishes it goes back to the start which is what it is currently showing us and it will eventually end the same way it started we can hear this slowly speed up and then slow back down in this segment here If you were paying attention in the last segment of audio there, you could hear the gears which happened near the start of the song. You could hear the gears turning and the percussion coming back that happened at that section. And coming up near the end of the song, you could start to hear the ticking that started the song, which can be heard in this section here. After the ticking, the chimes and the slow, juddery beat comes back in the final section, just before the song slowly dies out until it's completely silent, just like it was before the song started. This can be seen in this section here. Now that I've finished my 10 minute rant about music, I would like to talk about some of the greatest moments where in this level it just works. The level flows so well and everything, all of the moving pieces just move into line and everything works perfectly. And I'd like to start with in room 3, whenever you drop down and you go up while all of the blocks line up and I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that clip now. In this section, when all of the blocks just line up, you can just perfectly dash up and jump, and everything feels smooth, even though it could be clunky and everything could mess up. It's very similar to some of the other rooms, which look like everything can mess up easily, but they just run perfectly and they work so smoothly. That's why this is one of the greatest levels, and it works like a clock. It's clockwork. It's like clockwork. Another section of the level that's very similar to this is in the next room. Right at the end of the room, there's a section where you have to do an ultra and then jump three times. Wall bounce up and everything runs smoothly. The block that comes in that you have to wall bounce off is always on time. Nothing messes up and it just runs. I'll play the clip now. This level has some of the smoothest berries to get. My two personal favourites being the second and the last one, even though the first berry is still very good to get. But I would like to talk about the second berry and how smooth it is to just bounce up, do some supers side to side, make it to the top, and everything runs smoothly. Here's the clip. One of my favourite parts of this room is the supers at the start. It's actually this room that made me want to create this video because I was, I wanted an excuse to get all the strawberries and not look like a weirdo for just doing one level of strawberries and ignoring all the other ones. So I made a video of it and that's the one you're watching right now. And this room started the video, which is why I have to include it somewhere. So the supers are amazingly timed, everything goes up smoothly, and then you get 
up the little yellow blocks that move by and you gotta jump which work perfectly and then you go up and you do this level's iconic wall bounces off the blocks that are moving down grab onto the walls and jump up a few which is so much harder than it looks but whenever it works it's so good it feels amazing and it feels like it was just meant to be anyway we're going to move on to the final room of the level which is one of the smoothest rooms and this is the clip here This room is far too long to talk about just the whole thing, so I did have to cut it down to the end. But the end of this level is the main part I want to talk about, because after you do that ultra hyper bunny hop thing, you get so much speed that you just launch over a gap and you get perfectly onto the elevator at the end, which slowly rises you up to the heart. And it runs so smoothly, and it is such a great ending of the level. And you may be thinking, oh, well, I finished. I've finished talking about everything. What else could I talk about? But there's still a there's still a strawberry. Yeah, mm, the final strawberry is one of the best rooms in this level, and I can't not talk about that room and make this video. So I guess uh, here's just a whole clip of it, and I'm going to break it down individually, part by part. But here's the whole clip. Now that you've seen the full pain and also how smooth that is, that it's such a smooth room to watch and play through, but it's also painful, it's really hard, which again reflects the ruined clock tower as I was saying earlier, but now we're going to go through it again, but I'm going to stop it at certain segments and I want to talk about what makes it so smooth and so fun to play. I'd like to first stop on the first block boosted wave dash because this really shows how powerful these new purple colours of blocks are. You go so much faster and then you have to do the furry jumps afterwards which make you zoom past and speed makes this game so smooth and fun to play which can be seen then coming up in a second. The next section I'd like to talk about is where you do the chained wave dashes back to back. These are smooth, these are rhythmic, you do them back to back with the same timing, three of them, and it feels smooth. It works because you're used to the clock timing that we've dealt with this entire time. The whole thing is a clock tower, we know the clock, and it works amazingly. It's so smooth, and it's so fun to play through. Finally, I'd like to talk about the last bird ultra and then the boost that you get up at the end just before the strawberry. This part, you have to gain speed to clear the gap. And as I've said, speed makes it more smooth and more fun to play. This gap is the final challenge between the final strawberry. And as soon as you finish it, you can go back and get the heart and you've finished the level. You're done. It's the end of clockwork. And just like you started, you end the same, the same place, right back in the lobby. Just like the song, it's cyclical. And you can just continue to do whatever you want after, like nothing ever happened.
thank anyone who has managed to get this far in the video. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing. If you have any comments, anything you'd like to share, anything you'd like to tell me about the video, any complaints, any positives, I don't mind. This is my first time doing anything even remotely like this. And I'd just like to thank anyone who's managed to watch this far. It's taken me far too long to make this. I started maybe three months ago and I'm just finishing it now. Um, if you'd like to see any more from me, please subscribe. Or, of course, you could also follow my Twitch, which will be in the description. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash PickleTheCow6. I stream there very often playing Celeste. Just doing some strawberry jam, modded, anything like that. And I hope you check in and please say in chat if you're from this video because I'm happy if anyone has watched it. And I, I mean, have a great night, great day, great evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you.